Okay, so in the T tutorial, I'm going to be telling you how to do a simple uh, regression in SPSS. Simple in a simple regression, what you try and do is you try and work out the relationship between one independent variable and one dependent variable uh, in order to allow you to predict the dependent variable based on the independent variable. Okay, so again, pause this if you want to write in these details. I've used these this, these days before in one of the previous um, tutorials I made. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, well, we go to analyze and then regression and then linear. So this is just a simple straight line that we're trying to draw between the variables. And um, what we do is we take extraversion, which we're going to put on the y axis, and put it into the dependent variable. And we're taking alcohol drinks and putting them over onto the independent variable. Okay. And that's that, nice and straightforward. Then we press OK. Right, so SPSS, as always, very helpful, gives us lots of uh, information. Um, what does all of this mean? Okay, so first of all, you've got just a general summary of what, what it was all about. Next, we have the model summary. So when you're doing regressions and things like this, what you're actually doing is you're creating a model. And that model is basically saying, based on the data I have here, can I construct and understand what's going on? and then how well is what I've got put together how good is that at predicting what we've actually got and that's what we're doing statistical models are all about so they tell you lots of these things like the, the big R and R squared which is how much of the variance in the uh, dependent variable can be explained by the independent variable and these things here you don't need to worry about too much for now the next table is the ANOVA table and this one's quite important because what this does is this is an ANOVA test um, of your regression model so this tells you whether or not your regression is actually good at doing anything whatsoever. So um, if this comes up as non-significant, um, then it basically means your model is rubbish and cannot account for anything that's going on. Um, so uh, how do we tell if it's any good? Well, we look here at the SIG value, and that's because that's less than the alpha level of 0 0.05. What that means is that our ANOVA is statistically significant. So it's actually being able to predict the values that we're obtaining based on our independent variable. If we chosen a completely stupid uh, IV, um, then it wouldn't be good at predicting the DV, and we just have to chuck it out. This is why you use these things. So when you're doing an experiment and you think various different bits and pieces, various IVs are able to predict an outcome, so a DV, um, you can then use this kind of thing to see if your understanding of the theory and what's going on in the real world is actually accurate by running these tests. That's the whole point of it. Okay, so um, when you're reporting your uh, your overall regression model, you need to give the f value, which is here. So it's an f value of 17.3. That's a massive f value, um, and then degrees of freedom for your ANOVA is f statistic r1, comma three. So that one works. And then for your t-test, uh, for your overall ANOVA, um, is the, degre the re residual degrees of freedom. So it's three. That one there. Um, and then the next step of bits and pieces we have to look at is the coefficients. And the coefficients are actually, so if you imagine it's basically like drilling down into more and more detail. So we start off with these kind of general variables, summary of the model, tell us whether or not model means anything, and then the actual values obtained in the model. So this is sort of the, the most fine grain level of detail we can get when we're doing this kind of thing. And this gives us all sorts of really useful information. First of all, you've got the constant here, big B. This one here is the intercepts. So that's part of the model. Um, and then we have the standardized coefficients, the beta here. And what that is, that's the slope for this variable here. When we have more than one variable entered, they've got more than one slope, obviously. And the t-value uh, is there. And then the p-value associated with that is there. OK, so what does all this do? Well, first of all, basically, if you imagine it as though you've done your OK, so you've done your overall model. You know your, mo your model works somehow. Now the question is, does the uh, factor that I've entered in actually account for anything and is it meaningful? In this case, yes it is because that is statistically significant uh, because it's less than 0 0.05 and then when you report this you just say t equals uh, 4.166 and the number of degrees of freedom I mentioned a moment ago are actually all the way up here 3. So that is t the number of degrees of freedom you use for your t statistic you're reporting here. Okay, um, It seems a bit confusing I know but there we go simple question in SPSS is one of the simplest things you can do and it's very straightforward. Okay, 